Welcome back to our Algebra 2 Quadratic Functions Lesson 5, Zero Product Law, Homework Review, Part 2. In Part 1, we were solving quadratic, or basically, we had, or we had equations already factored for us, and in this case, we already had uh, also questions where set equals zero. Now for question number three, we're asked to solve each of the following quadratic equations by first manipulating them so that one side of the equation is set equal to zero. Because one of the things we want to do is, you know, always set our quadratic equation to zero, but at the same time, making sure whatever our uh, variable squared is positive. So for a, x squared plus 4x minus 40 equals 10x plus 15. Since x squared is positive on the left side, we're going to just move everything to the left, to the left side, subtracting 10x and 15. Minus 10x minus 15. So we're going to get, in this case, x squared minus 6x minus 55 is equal to 0. Okay? So this is the form we want. We always want to make sure when we solve quadratic equations, we want to set our equation set equal to 0. So now we factor, we can then set each factor equal to 0. So now we're trying to find two numbers that multiply 55 and subtract to 11. And I think I know what numbers they'll be. In fact, we have x and x, and the numbers will be 11 and 5, because 11 times 5 is 55, and 11 minus 5 is 6. So now we have, put, we have the ne uh, 11 the negative sign and the 5 positive sign, so that we will get a sum of negative 11 plus 5 is give us, will give us a negative 6, and the negative 11 times 5 is negative 55. We then set each of these factors equal to 0, so we have x minus 11 equal to 0, and x minus 5, x plus 5 equals 0. Add 11 to both sides, x equals 11. Subtract 5 from both sides, x equals negative 5. So I'll put this here, x equals 11, x equals negative 5. And I'll box that answer for us because my handwriting is dreadful, and I don't have a stylus. Okay. Letter B. 4x squared plus 3x minus 11 equals 3x minus 2. Well, we're going to subtract 3x from both sides, as well as 2. Add, add 2 to both sides, because opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. And we're going to get, in this case, 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now, what we have here is uh, referred to as a conjugate pair uh, situation or the difference to perfect squares, meaning that we, we have a perfect square minus perfect square, and when we factor this one here, what we do is the following. We look at the square root of each term, and the square root of 4x squared is really 2x, so that goes in the front. And the square root of 9 is 3, that goes in the back. We have a plus and a minus. So now we solve for each of these. We have set each one equals zero. We have 2x plus 3 equals zero. And then 2x minus 3 equals zero. We're going to subtract 3 on both sides. 2x equals neg 3. Divide both sides by 2. X equals negative 3 over 2. Sorry about that. Again, it being really tiny here. Okay. Same thing. Add 3 to both sides. So 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2. X is equal to positive 3 over 2. And it always happens with the conjugate pairs. You have these, these two roots that are opposites of each other. Okay. Let's continue. And we're going to take a look at C here. C, I'm going to move this down a little bit more so we have some room. And so we have 6x squared minus 15x plus 2 equals 2x squared plus 10x minus 4. We're definitely going to want a smaller, we're definitely with smaller of the x squared, so minus 2x squared, minus 2x squared minus 10x, minus 10x, 
add four and add four. We're going to get in this case four x squared minus 25 x plus six is equal to zero. Okay, so now we've got a factor. And again, that whole guess and check method. Um, now the other method we can use that I've talked about before is that we can um, we can kind of move the four over, multiply it to the six, all right? And we get x squared minus 25x plus 24. This is not, this is not the same value, but this is a model of a quadratic function we're going to help use to help us solve the factor, okay? And so this is the other method that, that we talked about in our class. Well, we normally, we're gonna normally find two, well, first off, instead of putting an x and x in the front, because of this unusual method, we're putting four x. We're putting four x and four x in the front. You'll see how it works out later on though, if you're not familiar, right? If I haven't been watching videos and stuff, so. Uh, so two numbers that multiply 24 and add to 25 are definitely going to be 24 and 1. Okay? The large number gets the negative. And because we want a positive 24, this is a negative as well. Now, this next step we do is we're going to... Oops. Oh, sorry. But, ooh. Uh, this next step, I just, <laughs> just want to make sure I move up a little bit higher. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, so the next step is we're going to take the greatest common factor for either of the factors we have. And we see that for 4x minus 24, we can factor out a 4. So 4, and we are left with x minus 6. Now the 4x minus 1 stays where it is. And then finally, we divide everything by the 4 from before. And so our fully factored form is going to be x minus 6 times 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, let's move this up a little bit here. Sorry about that. And so if you, in case you were wondering, you know, will this work out? And so we can, we can distribute. We'll have x times 4x is 4x squared. x times 1 is negative x. Uh, negative 6 times 4x is negative 24x. And negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. And we'll have, in this case, 4x squared minus 25x plus 6 equals 0, which is exactly what we have from before. All right, so here on the side, we're going to solve for our factors. Our factors were x minus 6 is equal to 0, which means, in this case, we add 6 to both sides. x is equal to 6. All right, so that's the first solution. And then we have the second factor, 4x minus 1 equals 0. We add 1 to both sides. 4x equals 1. Divide both sides by 4. x equals 1 fourth. And that's our second value. So x equals 6 and x equals 1 fourth. Now for D. Now we have, for D, we have negative 16. First of all, we have a different letter, right? So it's not X, T now. And uh, so we have, uh, so negative 16 T squared plus seven, six T plus five is equal to 12 T plus five. And so I was mentioned before that we want to move everything over to one side, but we also want to make sure that our, that whatever is squared is positive. So it's actually going to look like this. We're going to add 16 T squared to both sides. And 16t squared to both sides. Subtract 76t. And subtract 5. Now, on the left side, we have 0. On the right side, we have 16t squared. The 12t minus 76t should give us 64t plus 64t. And the 5 plus negative 5 equals 0. And so here we only have two terms, but again, we try with the first, the greatest common factor, and we see in this case 0 is equal to our greatest common factor is 16t. And so we're left with t plus 4, because in this case, 4 times 16 is 64. 
So here we set each, each factor equal to zero. We have 16t equal to zero, and then t plus four equals zero. We divide both sides by 16. t is equal to zero. That's our first answer. Subtracting four on both sides. For the second one, for t plus four equals zero, we get t equals negative four. And that's our solution. And it seemed a little bit weird, but notice in this case, everything had worked out nicely. Let me make this full page for everybody so you can see everything here. All right. And this will be the end of our Algebra 2 quadratic Functions, Lesson Number 5, Zero Product Law Home Review Part 2. Uh, again, if you found this helpful, um, please give it a like. And subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Um, we're, giving, we're doing a giveaway after 200 subscribers. Uh, and, um, you know, now details will come up afterwards after we, after we hit that number. We're, right now, we're not there yet, but uh, so... Look forward to, if you guys, you know, if you guys know anyone else who thinks it would be helpful to watch this note, can maybe share it with them and all. And uh, this way, you know, I want to make sure everyone understands how to do these things. And, you know, see how the factoring is done, how, how we set everything up and all. And be, really, this is very important stuff here. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I'll make sure to catch the next video. Um, and I'll see you then. Take care, everybody. And as always, be safe.